What is up, YouTube? It is Monster Chappy. We're back, and here today, we're breaking down further into this super custom offensive scheme. If you guys have not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as my channel, YouTube slash Monster Chappy, as well as go ahead and get yourself a membership on MadamasterMind.com so you can get access to all of the sections of the guide. 1.5. And part 3.5 are both on the Madden Mastermind site in the basic membership area. And then parts 1 and 2 are on my YouTube. And part 3 is on the Madden Mastermind YouTube. And this is part 4. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this. Now so far we've looked at you know how to use or catch. We've looked at some running tips. We've looked at um, all of our single back stuff. And so in today's video it's natural that we're going to go to the juice this is the main beef of the scheme. Um, if you've watched me play on stream, most of the time I'm in pistol. And, you know, that's one of the best things about this playbook is that it's just got so many options in pistol that uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Now, the formations we're going to be looking at in today's video um, is going to be the pistol ace, the pistol ace twins, and the pistol Y trips. And the reason is because there's not a whole ton of plays within each of them that we're going to use outside of the runs. So, first things first, strong power, halfback counter, slam, 0-1 trap. Those are going to be your main kind of runs. Um, and the ace twins, you're going to run the counter, the slam, the dive, the strong power. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. And then in the pistol... Um, why trips here? I do not like the strong power out of this play. I've seen somebody actually post a YouTube video where they posted this as like a money run, and I was just laughing because I was just like, this is such a terrible run. Um, strong power out of the pistol wide trips is an awful run. I do not recommend it. But the counter uh, is definitely one that can make up for it and then the dive so pretty much out of this formation you're going to run the counter and the dive now why do i say you don't want to run strong power out of this formation um so i'll show you here in a second it it loses yards way too often you're going to lose yards way too often and um you know if you just go to random play like even in the tip video it's funny because it happened i was like really <laughs> But if you run strong power to pistol wide trips, like so many times this dude's gonna miss this block and you're just gonna lose yards. Like it's it's I don't know. I know somebody's in the comments gonna say, Well, I've had success. Don't get me wrong, you can have success with this run. Like you can see right here, you can have good success with this run. I'm not denying that. But if you wanna be consistent, which is what I look for in a run, consistency then you're definitely gonna gonna wanna just avoid this run altogether. Like I said, you can pull it off sometimes, but if they're running a half decent defense a lot of the times the wide receiver misses the block completely and uh, you just get screwed because you get hit in the backfield so I'm trying to find a, a example of when all right all right so there's one good example um, so pretty much anytime they got a dude over there um, it's it's definitely gonna happen that way um, right here we'll see probably it happen again like I said so any kind of user anything like that is gonna shut down that strong power otherwise the strong power is good out of the the other formations that we use in the scheme so anyways I just wanted to point that out speaking from someone who actually uses his tips and stuff in the videos I don't just give you guys crap so I'm just saying throwing that out there here yeah, I'm taking a shot at whoever made that tip video if you want to debate with me we can go ahead and do that it's your boy Let's get into this tip. Anyway, we're going into the ace now. <laughs> we're going into the pistol ace. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to break down the counter and all that stuff too much out of every formation in the pistol. I'm just going to break it down once. So let's just look at the counter and the strong power. We're going to essentially run them the same way pretty close. The difference is on the counter, as you can see from the play art, is that your right guard and your right tackle or your left guard and your left tackle are going to be the guys that kind of pull. And then in the strong power, it's going to be your left guard and your right guard every single time. So, you know, if you're in mutt, make sure you get your some nice mobile running or um, mobile lineman as well as mobile running back. <laughs> um, but mobility is helpful as well as with your tackles if you prefer the counter. Now, the difference between these runs 
is in my opinion the uh the strong power develops a little bit quicker you get a little bit quicker you know a little boost to the line if you will or whatever you want to call it you get there a little bit faster but i also feel like the counter offers similar qualities it's just a little bit slower developing now that's not necessarily a bad thing sometimes i prefer slower developing runs it really just depends on the type of defense your opponent is playing so if they're playing a defense that shuts down strong power that defense might be terrible against the counter or vice versa now one thing i always like to look at is once your opponent starts keying in on the outside runs like what they'll typically do is they'll go to four three wide nine or they'll go to something where they got a lot of guys on the outside if you want to break there i break down a couple more tactics that people like to do um in part 3.5 so definitely check that video out but what they'll do is they'll go to like the wide nine which is going to be pretty solid against the uh strong power here um i mean we got some yards there but it's a it's a formation that's going to be a lot better versus say the the strong power here to the outside so you know they come down user then they lock that up so what you can do in that scenario is that's when you're going to want to hit the the check down to the o1 trap because then you can get inside. So like if they're running a formation where all their linemen and all their linebackers and all those guys are spread out, that's when we could just take up the middle, you know, just take what the defense gives you and uh, get three, four, five yards and uh, just keep them honest, you know. I definitely prefer the, the, the dive and the reason is I think the strong power or um, O1 trap is awesome because, you know, you can get definitely some really good yardage, but at the same time, like if they use her, they can sometimes just run through untouched, and it's really annoying because you'll get hit in the backfield. Whereas with the dive, if they try to run through, it's you know it's going to get picked up. So that's pretty much it for the runs, though. Like I said, guys, I don't want this scheme to take forever to talk about. I could talk about running all day long. Um, I'm a run first kind of person. However you use the scheme is entirely up to you. But let's look at the passing plays. So there's two passing plays I like out of the pistol ace. One is going to be a wide receiver screen. And that's pretty much going to be a makeshift screen here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put Charles on a flat, and then I'm going to put Avery here or whoever it is on a curl. And this is pretty much it. Um, and your reads, again, you can face catch with bowl. You can do a quick pass to this um, slant out. Or most of the time, you're just going to hit Charles here on the flat and um, you know get your yards that way it's just a nice little makeshift screen play to keep the defense honest and things like that so that's the setup for the play this is cover three so that's probably going to lock up the slant i mean i got the pass in there but you really don't want to make that pass um a lot of people have been asking what if they run man what if they run man what if they run cover two cover four well, you know you've only been going against cover three in these videos and honestly the only reason i don't break it down versus man and versus, you know, other defenses is just because it's going to take way too long to break down each of the plays. Like if I break down this one play in particular versus man and versus cover three, cover two, cover four, you know what I mean? Cover two invert. If I break it down versus every single kind of defense, um, we're going to run into issues just for length of time purposes. So like if they run man, though, that slant out is going to get nasty money. Like he's he's going to tear this dude up every single time. So, you know, for those of you wondering what if they run man? Well, then you got that slant out right there. And then if it's one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can, again, go over the top. Or, you know, let's say they take away the slant here. Maybe put a purple. Um, and then there's another play we run out of this anyway. But when that happens, you got Bo. Hit him over the top. Now, he's not the fastest. But, you know, if you got a faster dude, you can do that. Or, or you can obviously face catch that pass over there. And um, versus man defense, though, typically these makeshift screens aren't the best idea we'll uh we'll set it up here with the nice little defense but like i said the make sh makeshift screens usually aren't the best idea versus man coverage because typically what happens is the linebacker will come in behind the blocks so the blocks will be out here where the flat zone is but the guy covering the halfback will actually be just sliding right behind them and then just make a clean tackle on the halfback so typically i like running the uh, makeshift screen versus um zone and then if they're running man i'm usually going to go to either the curl or the slant out or the guy on the streak now the other play i love out of this formation is pa power o and 
let's go ahead and look at that so for the setup on this play all i like to do is this is going to essentially be somewhat like a pa end around a little bit we're going to put avery here you can put him on a fade you can put him on a streak that's entirely up to you um and then we're going to go ahead and put this tight end here on a drag and the reason we like to do that is because um you know again we can run it like this if you want and just run it like that that's one way we can run it another way we can run it is to go like this we can put uh, Avery here on the fade again and then we can put Charles on a flat zone um, either way whatever you prefer uh, it's gonna work just fine so whatever way you know the opponent is blitzing you or whatever the case may be like maybe they're running an a gap or something and the tight end picks it up and the running back doesn't or vice versa you may want to block block the halfback or you may want to block the tight end so if you do run it this way i usually like blocking the halfback as well that way we can make this quick pass to bow um on the left side because that's the little glitchy route from the pa end around play itself and you know essentially that's essentially how we're going to run this play so if you've seen PA in around enough times um, I'm sure that you all have you got that I just like that drag too because you can hit that over the middle uh, and it gets under every single zone and like I said the face catch and we're not going to break this down again we broke down enough PA in around type plays but that uh that's essentially that play in a nutshell now we're going to go into the pistol ace twins and the plays we're going to be looking at again are going to be the halfback slip screen, the drag, <coughs> the PA FL stretch, and then the PA counter waggle, as well as smash, which is going to be a particular cover to invert beater for the most part. So halfback slip screen. <coughs> Let's set this up. Really, all you need to do, how I like to set this up. Is I'm gonna drag Bo here. He's a slot wide receiver. So whoever your slot wide receiver is, drag him. You can go ahead and hit this Joker right there. Get some nice little yards. Or, you know, if they use her that, because a lot of people, you know, will use her the middle of the field. If they start using that, then you can go ahead and hit uh hit Charles there. Now I didn't get a lot of yards there, but um, typically your opponent's gonna make some adjustments like they might shift their line to the right, they might crash them maybe some press coverage or whatever the case may be and uh, for whatever reason when they crash their line it actually makes the line get in a little bit slower for whatever reason like I said this isn't something you're gonna run regularly I don't often run screens but it's definitely something nice to mix in if we could ever get this pass off <laughs> um, but it's definitely something nice to mix in keep your opponent honest especially if they're blitzing you like crazy or maybe they're playing super max coverage all the time Either way, the that's typically what I like running my screens against is either a heavy blitz or a heavy zone coverage. So, you know, if that's the type of defense your opponent's running on a consistent basis, this may be what you want to do um, offensively to just keep them honest or to slow them down from doing whatever it is that they're doing. So, uh, right here, you do need to wait a little bit before you make the pass. As you can see, if you throw it early... That's going to get dropped by the halfback for whatever reason. Um, this quarterback is not mobile. That's, you know, one of the unfortunate things about not having a mobile quarterback. But uh, if you can get this guy to catch it there, like I said, you definitely will get some good blocks. So that's the halfback's slip screen. Now we're going to go into the play action FL stretch. And uh, I definitely like this play a lot. It's definitely a, a common play. It's one you'll see quite a few people use. And essentially, all we're going to do on this play is <clears throat> what I like to do is I'll put this tight end here on a slant or I'll leave him on a stock route. And then what I'll do is I'll either block the halfback or I'll put him on a flat to the left. And if I put him on a flat to the left, I'm usually going to put the tight end on a slant there. Um, it's usually that route combination. And then for the outside wide receiver... I'll either put him on a fade or a streak or something, something that you can face catch. Obviously, Avery isn't the ideal person to have there, but, you know, let's just use our imagination. Let's pretend Bo's there and not Avery. That's what you want to set your depth chart up properly for. But this is typically going to be one of the play arts that we use. And um, right there, you can hit this guy across the middle. I usually like to precision down that, especially right after his cut. You can get a good amount of yardage. 
And um, <clears throat> let's run it one more time. As you can see, we get the slant here, and this is definitely a concept we use a lot, uh, where we'll have a flat and a slant together, and then the slant usually gets open um, after the the defender here, who's in a flat zone, he'll come and jump this. And if I would have waited even longer, he would have been more open. But he'll come and jump this route here on the flat, and then that'll leave the slant wide open uh, in this area of the field. And then likewise, if you know if they're shading the coverage deep or they just don't have a flat zone or something you can always just check it down to the running back like we could hit him right there he'd have probably got like three four five yards nothing crazy but definitely something nice and then of course you got your face catch you get your route across the middle here for the precision down and then this route um if the deep zone isn't covering him he's definitely going to be a, a good option so you know another option you could go if you want to set it up is put kelsey here on a fade and then we can put uh, Charles there on a flat. And then that should open up this guy here on that right side. So, you know, there's definitely some options you have as far as how you want to set up the play. It's entirely up to you. But those are just a couple ways I like setting up the play. Now, the next play we're going to look at is PA counter waggle, which, again, is going to use kind of the same concept as the last play. Um, we just got a bunch of guys coming across the field at the same time. So <clears throat> what I'll typically do is just like last time i'm either going to put the tight end on a fade and the reason i put him on a fade is because one you can rocket catch it two it takes away the outside corner on the right which is the most important part of him being on a fade instead of a streak if he's on a streak usually the safety covers him which is fine but if you want to get Bo and fasano and those guys going across the middle open this guy can't cover him so we need this guy to get taken away by the tight end going deep. And then that opens up the entire right side, um, you know, to get a bunch of yards there. So typically what I'll do is I'll either put him on a fade here. Or, like I said, we can we can go this route as well. We can go with the drag slant. Otherwise, um, another thing you can do is put this outside guy on a fade there. And uh, do something like this as well. Um, it's really entirely up to you how you want to set it up. But it's going to be essentially the same thing as last time. Um, I threw that pass. He got stuck. That was unfortunate. But um, as you can see here, you can run it like this as well. Um, just put that dude on a fade. And then, like I said, that's going to open things up for, for Bo there going across the middle if your tight end is on a fade. Um, and we'll just replay this here so we can get through this a little quicker. Like I said, you got the tight end, like you could rock and catch him. All you gotta do is precision down and you know just click on. You gotta wait till he's like 20 yards up the field at least or something. Um, but usually I don't do that. I don't it works sometimes, but definitely not something you want to live and die by. Uh, but as you can see, you can hit this dude here on the flat, and then if the flat zone does take away that shorter route, you're always gonna have him available. And then if they um are in cover three like this. You can't throw this right away. Now, I know logically you're thinking, well, it's the deep blue on the left. He shouldn't come across the middle. If there's no other safety or if there's no other players in the middle, this guy will actually stay with him for quite a while. So as you can see, I mean, the pass was already made, but, you know, he'll stay with this this wide receiver for some time. So you have to wait until you see the separation before you make that pass because, like I said, that dude will stay with him for um, a little ways there. As you can see, he finally breaks free. But it did take a while um, before the corner abandoned him. Because in this game, the logic is if there's no one there, which it should be, uh, it's it's more accurate to real life. But he's going to stick with him for a little while there. So most years, you could have made this pass right here. And then that dude's just completely gone. And you can precision down that and still get it. But if you want that just wide open, you might have to wait a second or two uh, before you do actually make the pass. And like I said, you can make it right away um, like this. Um, but you just got to precision down and just make sure they don't got a guy underneath um, lurking it. So that's pretty much that play. Now the last play I'm going to look at out of this formation is going to be Smash. And I run this out of a few different formations, so this, it'll maybe get a little repetitive. But pretty much this is our cover two invert beater. If they run cover three or any other defenses, I usually don't run this play. But against 
Cover two invert, I like this play a lot, and you'll see why here in a second. We're going to get the corner out there wide open. He just abuses it because of the tight end here. Fasano is going to take away the deep zone. And then once that deep zone has gone, it just leaves him wide open. And then, of course, for the um, little hitches there, let's say they don't want to cover the hitch. They just want to cover that corner route or something like that. Of course, you can just precision down these jokers. Best way to throw those is precision straight down. It's kind of glitchy. It makes zones like really dumb out a lot of the times. Like uh, we'll go ahead and we'll leave that dude on a flat right here. He might pick it off, but a lot of the times, if you throw it right away and precision down, like look at that, like that's crazy. You know, they got a flat zone over there, and we're still able to get a whole lot of yards and actually actually score on that play. So that's pretty much it for. This formation, I mean, like I said, you can hit Fasano. You can try and sneak him across the middle right there. It's usually not your best bet, though, because that's going to get picked off. But on the right side, you got a flat and you got a, um, a little deeper zone. So just depending on how they play it, um, again, you can just hit him, pick up a few yards. Nothing crazy, but, you know, definitely an option on the right side because that's the best flat route in the game. It's the one where he actually angles up. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that but that little difference in angle from him going up and to the right instead of just going straight to the right is huge as far as the amount of yards you're going to be able to get on any particular play now the last formation we need to break down um, for this video we're going to break down the bunch tight end we're going to break down the pistol trips uh in part five but why trips and like i said the run play you're going to want to run out of this is the halfback counter as well as the dive and I'll show you what to do with the counter you it's gonna be the same thing as the strong power there you just get better results because that dude always makes the block that's pretty much the difference you know between the strong power and the counter and why the counter is a much better play out of this formation in particular is because in the counter this wide receiver doesn't miss his block in the strong power, this dude misses his block almost all the time, just way too regularly. So it's just inconsistent. That's why you want to stick with the counter and the dive, again, depending on what your opponent's doing defensively. But the the passing plays we like out of this formation are actually going to be the halfback slip screen, which we already broke down. Um, and you're just going to run that stock, so nothing crazy there. Also, we have a wide receiver screen. Which again, for this one, all we're going to do is put the halfback to the flat on the right and then put the wide receiver on a curl. And since we broke down a play like that already, uh, I'm not going to do it again. It's the same makeshift screen idea. And then the other two plays I like are PA boot and PA comeback. So let's look at this boot first. And this is essentially going to be our PA end around type play. All we're going to do is we're going to put the tight end on a flat. And then we're either going to curl Charles here or we're going to block him. And again, it's just pretty much PA end around. So we don't have to look at this a whole bunch of times. Um, it just depends how that little flat zone plays. You know, a lot of the times the flat zone is going to take the deeper route. So in that case, you just want to, you know, give it, to, give it to your tight end, check it down real quick pass, bang, five yards. Nothing crazy there. But, you know, again, that's a, a PA end around type ish play doesn't work quite as good but it's it's solid definitely solid little play you can mix in once in a while but then again my favorite passing play out of this okay you can go smash if they run cover to invert a lot uh, but pa comebacks and the reason i like this play is because of the route that goes across the middle so what i'll do is i'll put this guy here on a drag and then i'll put the running back on a flat and that's pretty much how i run the play um, if you want to make more adjustments you can block the the, the, the tight end you can put them on a streak or something like that. But I, I just like running a play like this. And the reason is because it is R1 or R, um, RB route. That route gets nasty. And again, if they run man um, against this concept here with the running back and the um, the wide receiver, if you got a drag in a, in a um, flat route like that, it just opens up your drag so much more. Like it gets them glitchy open because the guy covering the halfback will actually set a pick on the guy covering <clears throat> the wide receiver. Or sometimes they run into him, unfortunately. But nine times out of ten, he'll be wide open. And then that route across the middle beats beats man as well. So that's pretty much that play. 
and uh, that's pretty much this video uh, we're <laughs> hit the 25 minute mark but we did cover three formations so it's a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time so just make sure that you you know maybe replay the parts you missed or you know go back to parts you need to or whatever the case may be and again check out the other parts of the scheme as they will definitely help you out uh, in the future and um you know whether you use this scheme or not maybe some of the concepts you like and you can add it to your own scheme so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh you know be on the lookout for the rest of the parts the reason i don't like delay routes is that right there because sometimes you wait a little too long so usually you know like i said i'll put them on a different route or i'll block them or something but um usually if i do change this route i'm gonna put them on a streak because as you've seen on that play that drag there is just a little bit annoying so i'll usually put them on a streak or something like this and then you can you know do something else so that anyway besides the point that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys i'll catch y'all next time peace